Inizia il giorno. Buongiorno. Come va? How are you this morning? How do my videos find you? Are you grateful for your day? <clears throat> How are you starting your day? I feel so much better today. Are you worshiping the beauty of life, nature, the sun, the sky, the birds and the trees? Ah. <sighs> the water and the sea. There's so much to behold and to be grateful for. Today I am grateful for having been here, not spending the time as I had wanted, but just enough to get a taste and I know I'll be back. Time to get ready, it's time to move. So I am going to catch the train from Roma. Oh, oh, from Naples, Piazza Garibaldi, <laughs> to Roma. Someone is beating their rug. Ah, oh, this, this. Mm, so gorgeous. Perfect day. Perfect day to go to Rome and explore. Ah. Mm, bella Napoli. Le Vesuvio. Mm hmm. So I am dressed because it's really, really nice out. I can still wear shorts, but I'm pretty sure I may have to pull out a jacket or long pants while I'm in Rome. So I'm excited about this because I'm just gonna relax before my travels next. We are talking on the way to get a taxi for me. And Marisol is driving me just to a taxi stand because it's it's actually cheaper. Costa un po' più meno quando prendiamo il taxi dove sono. Mm -hmm. and then when you call the taxi, they charge like a five euro extra fee for them to sì. come directly to you. See? Sì. No. Ah, probabilmente lui c'è in cacchi, questo carrettino, vedi? Uh, Nella sì. frutta e la verdura. Sì, sì. C'è un carrettino. Mm. Ecco qua i taxi. Uh, ok. Chiedolo. So. Io sto facendo le video per un vlog che faccio. Come si chiama? Come si chiama? Video. No, tu. Come ah, Luigi, Luigi. Luigi sono Lana, un piacere. piacere come sei fatta? Lano? Lana. Lana. Come sei fatta? Ah, la sì. <ride> Leggero, eh? Sì, leggero. Sì, io stavo dicendo che 
dobbiamo vivere in questo problema nel mondo perché eh, c'è di um, idolatria di uomo e una cosa che la vita di gente non è in questo senso non si può vedere no? eh, qua è il diritto umano non ce l'abbiamo il diritto lavorativo mm. it's a huge problem but he was saying that it's worse here in the south than it is in all of the world persone che prendono il lavoro che no, sotto tavolo diciamo sotto tavolo ma qualche volta non vogliono pagare le persone sì. perché anche qua eh, è lo stesso se io devo lavorare una giornata ammazzarmi di lavoro per prendere un giorno e poi non essere quadrato non avere contatto Allora perciò la gente non vuole lavorare, se io invece dovrei guadagnare 50 euro al giorno, inquadrato con la sicurezza e tutto, allora a quel punto eh, diciamo, va bene, però se poi mi vogliono dare 25-30 euro al giorno a nero, loro dicono che in America questo non è il problema, in America c'è il diritto del lavoratore. Uh, quale era questo americano? Perché the quale Ooh, look at the size of that tree. That's a, that's a eucalyptus. Yeah. It's flood zone. Non è una zona di acqua alta. È una zona perfetta. 
Pico Rio. So now we're gonna go in the tunnel. No, non è passato. So, qualche alberi sono caduti, ma non molto. Ah. C'era piove come normale per noi, niente male. Ma ah, perché io sento in America che vengono il tornado. Eh, sì, quante volte c è, c è, c è, ci sono i tornado che è una parte di Toricano, ma non è fatto. cambiare tutto questo mess del mondo. There's the castle right there. I know this is the this is the taxi tour. <laughs> è vero, è vero. Io questo mi piaceva prendere il fiore, ma quando ero chiuso sempre this is always in construction per fare metro ancora, vero? Sì. This is a, a very long work in progress. I thought it would be done by now. Pensavo è stato Finalmente è fatto, ma non è ancora. Eh, ma hanno sbagliato tutto. <ride> ecco. Ho sentito come c'erano qualche uh, terremore nell'altra parte quando è caduta di scala. Ah, sì, sì. il palazzo. Sì, yeah, il palazzo, the, the buildings fell because of the construction. Perché hanno fatto tutto marciapiede qua. La ah, bellissimo. è ridotta. Uh -huh. Allora si fa sempre traffico, sempre traffico. Si fa per questa piazza. That's true. Potevano fare una strada più grande. Sì. Invece hanno fatto una strada piccolina. Uh, infatti, e c'è tutto un ingorgo. In contrario, in sì. contrario. Via De Predis che si blocca. St. Elmo's on, the, on the, the, the hill there, that mountain top is, is Castello St. Elmo. And over here we have the boats that go to the islands and the carnival. Actually, That's the old station that they're redoing too. And to the right is where most of the main boats go up to Ischia, Capri and all. And this one is the cruise ships. But then also they have a, a military station over here too, the na Navy. And this is another big hotel, Borneo. drive just like a Neapolitan. I would drive on the taxi lanes, which you can kind of get away with because you have the, the uh, US Italian license plates when you work on the base. And I once got pulled over by a cabinieri on my way home from doing something. I think I had to go to the embassy for uh, my passport or something. And the cabinieri, I, I said, I'm sorry, I don't understand. And he said, tu sei una furba. He's, and, he, and that means you're 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 being very wise, um, uh, sneaky, suspicious, like not a liar, but you know you're getting away with something and you're acting. You know, I know there's another word in English that we would call it, but it was kind of comical because I'm like, I didn't smile, but when I when I left, I was like, I got, I went back to work and I said I told the story and they said, oh. <laughs> Yeah, that's funny. So, and this is one of the, I think this is the military base over in this area. Those are the updates. Sono molto vecchi questi cose qui. Come si chiamano? The vecchi forte? Or perché questo era chiuso per militare o qualcosa? Come si chiama? Questo è. Aquedotto? No, no. Topi. Oh, the, the, the castle tops. Um, kind of like when you have the thing that goes around to protect. 
Come here. Yeah, infatti. Neanche in fondo la nome in inglese. I don't even remember the English one. So now we're coming up to Piazza Garibaldi where I have to catch the station, the train. Yeah. Uh, it's so cool when you look down the street you can see how the, the cascading of the, the roads and how everything crosses and you can look, when you look down this street you'll see how it goes up. Oh, I'm sorry, you see a building. And then I love... Hey, grande, fiki! Mamma mia, that's all figs. <gasps> wow. Quanto mi, mi, mi piace il fichi. <laughs> Quando vedo un albero di fichi. Ah, mm. questo è grandissimo. <laughs> this is the largest fig tree I've ever seen. Forse più grande che mai ho visto. Un albero così grande. Piatto. Ma anche c'è la energia di prima, sai, quando c'è una, una cambia nell'area, nell sì, infatti io sento um, una cosa, e sto cercando ancora, perché in questo periodo, mentre sto girando a Napoli, a Venezia, anche ho sentito, uh, uh, vado a Roma, io sento il cuore, ma la gente, io sento c'è una, una parte che viva molto forte che vuole essere più, sai, per eh, scoprire, scoprire le altre cose. Per, eh, scoprire, non scopare. Scoprire, sì, 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 vero. Oh wow, infatti non ho visto dopo questo lavoro perché this is so much nicer than it used to be. È più bella, ma più pedonale. Non puoi andare lì, no? No, perché no, di là è un casino. Oh, ho capito, ok. E yeah, he can't go that way because ah, infatti, per entrare per il taxi e tutte le cose dall'altra parte. Se non dove non sapevi tu, tu fai un gran giro, yeah. vero? Eh sì, di là ci mettiamo. You have to know where you're going. Wow. Yeah, you have to go around the other way to get into where it's gonna drop me off. Crazy. There's an Asian shop back there that I used to get some things from. That antique pasticceria has the part of the sfogliatella. See, this place here, you can get a good sfogliatella. And now we're at the station. We had to go all the way around to come over here. And he's gonna drop me off, and I'm gonna get my ticket to Rome. A one-way ticket to Roma. Prendo rosa. Yes, this is how we do it. Yes. And now we're going to go in because I can't go film with all these bags. Anyway. But I wanted to say that was really interesting and that's why I came on this trip because I like to be in the locations and talk to the real people and hear the real stories of what is going on in the world because that is where you find out. You don't hear it on the news. You got to go to where the action is, where the truth is, where... There are no lies, because you can see it with your eyes. So I walked in over there. I just wanted you to see how clean and nice they've changed the station. I mean, it's actually a little bit more than I, when the last time I was here. I had been here years ago, and it was just renewed. And look at this. This is just, it's so clean. I'm going to go find the fried chidosa. There's the Frecce Rosso. They even have their own lounge, which is nice too. That's where we're now. There's a long line. You have to get a ticket. And I accidentally thought I saw 787 when I went up to the counter and the woman went off on me. And I was like, hey, listen, I made a mistake. I thought I saw 787. So it's like 187. It means people have left, obviously. There's not that. There's not even a hundred people in here. Off on another adventure. Mm. I just got my ticket, so. One way ticket to Roma. Fai attenzione ai borsaggiatori. You would say in Italian, che casino. All right, so I got this ridiculous ticket to stand and wait to be called. And then the woman 
went up to the counter and she said, they're not working. The system's not working. You have to get in the line. And I'm like, there's no way there's 100 people in here. So that didn't make any sense. So I just went over and I just went to the machine and I got my ticket. And so now I just have to figure out what platform it's on. And that's pretty simple. Just come over here and we figure out which one is my train, which is Precherosa 1330, platform 16. And it should be over in that direction. I stand corrected. It's to the left. So platform 16, we leave at 130. It is 114. So I have to go in that direction. I am at my carrozze, and it is number two, and I made sure to buy business class because I wanted comfort, and it's the furthest one, but that's because we're the closest one when we arrive into the train station at Rome Termini. I got lucky because if I hadn't gotten here earlier, I might not have had a spot for my bag, so. See that? That's my bags. Perfect. And I had help. Always accept help when you offered it. Two bags, which I got here in time to fit. And now I'm going to find my seat. Ten. This is my seat. The window seat. So I can have. This is so nice. Their space is silent. This is my window seat, and we're leaving the station. I'm on the other side. The other side has the view of the
place to spend. Just the hotel that I got has a spa and a sauna. So from there, my girlfriend and her daughters will meet me and we'll hang out for the day on Wednesday. And then I have an early flight on Thursday. So this is the last leg of my flight right there. I'll be honest, I'm ready to go home because I got a lot of work to do to make this more realistic in my life. Here we are. I gotta go get my bags ready to get off the train. So, time to roll. Now that I've made it through the train station, I'm out here. I'll tell you what, some of the best coffee places you'd actually find at Trump at uh, rest stops and in train stations and airports. Oh. Of course, Italy. It's the best coffee anyway. So now this broken bag, because I have a broken wheel, check this out. Look at this mess. It doesn't wheel, so it creates me more mess I'm trying to push this thing. <sighs> I'm gonna go find me a taxi. I have to tell you, I haven't been here, like I said, in almost 10 years. And boy, has it changed. I remember the old style of the, the directions of the trains and everything. It's really changed a lot. Anyway, I'm going to go catch a taxi just to make my life easier because this is too much to pull. C'erano problemi con il lavoro per tutti i genti qui in Italia, no, specialmente al sud. è troppo corta per essere depressa è troppo distrazione sono deve vivere bene la tua vita io non guardo la televisione ah amore mio quanto c'è bene si è pensato scusate si 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 e sto incontrando in Cinque. Uh, sì. Allora, stre stessa persona. Tre volte avanti e dietro. cambiare, questo è il problema per lasciare e cambiare quindici sì sì, eccoci siamo qui ciao and I have arrived at my hotel I left Curio Collection by Hilton actually I have to pull out my Hilton card because I don't know what it is and I love that the, the gentleman brought me my stuff in. Uh, treat yourself well, this is what it's about. Okay, now I go check in. So pretty. Buongiorno. Etro is another one of my favorite designers. Actually, before I go up the stairs, they're gonna take care of my bags, which is really nice. And I just wanted to show you this, this area over here. It's so pretty with all the Murano glass chandeliers. And then you look up overhead and you have beautiful music. And I could go back into the bistro, but I'm not going to. I'm going to go upstairs now so I can freshen up and go hit Rome. 
So, I'm in room 305. I've got my welcome gift. And it's time, as I have, arrived. There you go. Here we are. See, this is why I'm here. I can smell that. So the first floor, floor has the spa and a fitness center from 10 a.m. to 8.30. Ground, we have coffee, breakfast in the morning, which is extra, which I don't really care about. I don't really eat breakfast. I do more intermittent fasting, but I think I would definitely go. I'm going up to the rooftop to check that out as soon as I've uh, gone in my room and got my bags. And so here we are, third floor. I have the junior suite. And we'll go to the right. So sweet. 300. So let us see how this is. La 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 la. It's on the outside. So let's see what kind of view we get. 306. Oops, no, it's actually in the center. JS. There we go. Oh, I love that it's all touchless and you don't have to. Oops. You get it right the first time. There you go. Ah, okay. Hello there, darling. Has a little seated area with a TV, which of course I don't need. I actually prefer to be on the inside, and I'll tell you why. Because if you've ever been in Rome and heard the noise of the traffic, that can be quite the headache. So this is my bed for the time that I am here. I love it. Two, bed, two TVs, isn't that crazy? I think, yeah, I'm gonna have to put the key for the lights, so always remember that. And the bathroom, okay. All right, let's try this again. So you have to take this key and put it in here so that the lights work. Otherwise, your bathroom will be dark. <laughs> oh, this is really nice, very pleasant. I'm very happy with my Choosing with your towels and your robes. Okay, let us go check out this beautiful place. I just love details. And when you look up at the ceiling, this is so cool. And I thought I'd do the cinematic to see how this comes out. It really highlights that pretty bed, huh? Oh boy, I'm gonna sleep like a baby. I always sleep well, typically, when I do sleep. Mm-hmm. You can open up the window or not. Okay, it does open. So for the rooftop is up there. Ooh, okay. Safety. Safety. Okay. Should I change my clothes? Should I bring a sweater? Should I whatever la la la? I'm gonna make it really simple. And the other thing I love. Oh, there's my stuff. That's so cool. Anyway. He brought my bags in. What I love is they put it up on the stand for me too. I have two of them. This is the life I like. I like being treated well and I'm, I'm worth it and I'm willing to pay it. So anyway, cause I'm worth that. <sighs> this is where I'm at in my life. A good portion of my life I spent because of the way I was conditioned growing up, that's too expensive. Translation, I'm not worthy that other things are more expensive than I am. When in reality, I think that's a problem in the world is thinking you're not worthy, that when you say something's too expensive, what you're saying is you don't wanna pay for it, but you don't feel deserving of it at the same time or even judging people who have more money or willing to pay money. I understand being frugal and budgeting because I've had to do that over the course of my life. I've made really good money. And then I had to also budget and be very humbled. But it's also made me realize how much I appreciate. And I always have, ever since I was a little girl. When someone would give me a gift, I just, I treasure the things that are given to me. I appreciate the gifts that people give me. I maintain them. I don't treat them like, oh, it's just whatever, like an entitlement piece of property. And I really like, to me, everything has value. That's the way I see things, see life, see people, see the world, is everything has value. And if you don't see your own value, you're not gonna see the value in others. True story. 
So when you get right with you and you value yourself too, literally everything around you will seem brighter, richer. Literally, you will be richer. Like you attract where you're at. If you don't value yourself, you'll be devalued by others. You'll feel unappreciated, undervalued by those around you. So pay attention to those little subtle cues. Sometimes they're profound. Like, why do they keep doing this to me? What are you doing to yourself that's allowing and giving them permission to treat you the way you allow? This is setting standards, creating healthy boundaries, and truly is just about appreciation and staying in authenticity and integrity with who you are. Tapping into your heart, not getting all caught up in your head. Because again, kinesiology, your your body will always tell you the truth and it will guide you if you allow it to. Let's go upstairs to the rooftop and check that out because I could use a little sun too. Mm, I'm excited to just, just be here. <laughs> well, we're gonna go to the sky blue restaurant pool area because that's what I want to check out. Yeah, I accidentally hit five, whoops. Okay. Mm, nope, wrong one. Oh. oh my gosh, silly me. Hit the wrong button. I thought it was, it had stopped on five and kept going, but it didn't. And then it closed on me, so here we are. Now we're on six. Okay, here we go. All right. This is where we are. Sky. Sky blue. Okay. Ah, best is always the rooftop views. So there's a pool over here somewhere up there. That's what I'm here for. That pool. Mm -hmm. yeah, today's the day to be in the pool, for sure. Mm -hmm. well, not the best view, but it's a view. There's the pool. So it's packed up there. There's no room for me. Let's see what's over on this side. I'm just, I know there's a restaurant. Oh, that's so sweet. Actually, this is super pretty. Look at that. How pretty is that? Beautiful. A little place to sit outside, maybe? Oh, yeah, maybe over here. It's kind of peaceful. I don't see anybody. But there's nobody being served here either. So we're going to go back down to my room and go out. This is a spa area. There's a fitness center over here. Okay, let's go check it out. Okay. Spa. And that's a fitness center. Aha, uh -huh. this is what I wanted to check out. Hello. Hello. Oh, it's the yeah. bank door. That's really cool. <laughs> okay. Oh, thank you so much. So she's showing me real quick. This is the wet sauna. I, I'm not going inside. Yes, if there's somebody inside, I'm not going to video that. So this is amethyst and crystals. I see rose quartz. No? Rose quartz, quartz, and amethyst. Beautiful. Okay. For massage and facials, which I just made an appointment for tomorrow. Okay. Awesome. And then you have the bathrooms. Okay. Thank you, Crystal. So I will call you back if we can finish your data everything. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right, so I just booked myself a massage and a facial for tomorrow morning. And she's going to check on the time for me because I asked if I could come earlier because the earliest they open is 11.30. I said, and because I want to go in the sauna and the spa for, she said, an hour. And I would do that before the facial and the treatment. So hopefully by 10 a.m. I can get in there. All right, this is my hotel. And I am going to check out a place that I found on the internet, of course, raw chocolates and 
<laughs> gluten free. The street up ahead there with the palm, the pine trees, is Via Vittorio Veneto. Very popular street. I always like staying in this particular area personally, or over in the the um, Borghese Gardens. So I have to go this way according to my map between the streets. Of course, it always makes it interesting. <sighs> Rome and Naples have some similar driving styles, just saying. The taxi driver, when he was bringing me, he's like, are you single? Are you, are you engaged? Are you married? I said, because he kept on saying, Cosi sei bellissima. I said, thank you. And I said, yes, I'm married. <laughs> anyway, just to get him off my back, you got to do that sometimes. And he started to say it was 15 euro. And then I said, I, I was digging for change. And I said, I don't have that right now. I'm not sure. And then he goes, or 10 or whatever. I was like, wait a minute here. So I thought 15 was a, a bit much anyway for the distance that he brought me. 10 euro was probably more than he should have been. Okay, eight euro maybe, but I really didn't care at that point. So I gave him 10 euro and I was perfectly fine. So of course, again, I'm back in the territory of beautiful architecture and I have to cross the street in order to show you this. Plus I can't get between the, the uh, Italian military over here. But I wanted to show you how beautiful is this building. Even more so. My Italian boyfriend, Giulio, is from Rome. Look at that up there. So gorgeous. So pretty. I love the architecture. Ah. I'm going to turn right on the street. We're in Rome. Oh, I forgot that beautiful statue building. Oh, so much to see. We'll go back, but not right now. I'm just grateful that tomorrow I have a massage and a facial schedule. Again, when you look at the architecture, you can see the difference in the windows and the, how the period, the times are. Some of these are doors. <laughs> oh, I love it. I'm gonna turn left up there at the end of this massive building. Like, look at the size of the stones that are utilized. I mean, those aren't like something a human can pick up by themselves. Head southwest on Via Veni September toward Via Della Quattro Fontaine. Don't you notice how she, she's not very good at uh, pronouncing, but it's okay, I forgive her. And then you look in there and they've got some beautiful archways. Again, I, I see a door and I want to walk in it, especially those big doors. This is Quattro Fontane. Four corners, four fountains. Each corner has a different fountain. Now you get the hustle, the bustle. we're in. But again, look up below, up ahead, look over. <laughs> Which came first, the buildings or the fountains? That is the question, right? Notice that. Another cool building. So when there's a bar, this is how they make their terraces. They take parking spots off the sides of the street. And I wanted to see this. Again, the architecture of the different time periods. So cool. I love it. So we're going to that chocolate place that I was talking about. Compete with the ambulance. If 
you ever like the Mercur hotels are nice. The doors. The doors. <laughs> I'm going to cross though because I think I need to. Rushes to the different uh, famous spots, for example, right? They don't always pay attention to like some of the subtle areas, which is why it's really nice when you go with somebody who's a local and it can show you around and give you a little bit more historical background on things so that you feel like you got more history than just the, the standard. Hmm. Teatro Nazionale. And we are going this way. Dome in the distance. And again, look inside the doors. <laughs> I wonder what was there at one point. It's above both of all this. And the other side, too. Menu terra or menu mare, meaning do you want food from the sea or food from the earth, the land? Look at the size of these windows. Not only are they large, but they've got extremely big, thick, wrought iron protection in front of them. Neopolis Cafe Gastronomia. Mm -hmm. So this is Piazza del Esquilino and on the other side that's the Basilica del Papale Santa Maria Maggiore. This direction now. And again, I'm just going to show you the building above. Look up, look up, look up. Always look up. An Angolo Divino, Divine Angle. Had to stop and look between. Churches and cathedrals and basilicas, religion, 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 you know, and I have a huge appreciation for the architecture and curiosity for, you know, structures and angles and such. I was raised Catholic, so I get it. I'm also recovering and relearning what is in my heart what I feel in my body, my being. Oh wow, look at that. Look at the top. Because I think that's what it's all about. You know, what you've been taught, what you've been programmed to believe, because truly we don't even have original thought if you want to get technical. This is a beautiful hotel. How pretty is that? Not really original. 
We're just mimicking what we've been told and taught to think. Okay, said so Christiana. Oh, sound. Listen to this. You get a little opera inside the church. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> Sweet. That was a nice little treat. So, well, like I said, we're taught from those formative ages of, from when we're in the womb until six or seven, what to believe, what to think, shaping our realities, by our thoughts our biggest addiction is to our belief system because that's how they get you set up to follow along and be in hopefully in their minds they want to keep you in line it's all about slight right to stay on via our about trying to take individuality and turn it into a formality of Cons uh, conformity so individuality no longer they want you in conformity falling in line with the masses and I don't think anybody really wants that although the irony is is how many people follow the lead follow suit and start policing one another when they themselves don't want to be policed but they do it out of fear and the idea that if, if others don't go along it will af affect them when in reality, what other people do is none of your business. What, it, what other people think is none of your business. And you need to learn to just stay in your lane, pay attention to your own life, and stop trying to control others because you would not want it done unto you. So the golden rule is very simple. Do unto others as you want done unto you. I always thought it was a pretty simple rule to follow. I was an easy kid to condition into that particular mindset. I am over here. Oh, more flowers. Look at this. I'm a happy person with flowers. I grew up with fields of flowers all around me and wondering, why do women like flowers? Now I understand because flowers make me happy and they put me in my happy place. Taverna Urbana. So that's where we're at right now on Urbana. I am looking for Grezzo, this chocolate place that I'm excited to try. Look at that beautiful terrace over my head, right there. You probably can't see it as well. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? Oh, I'm serious. So I'm really because I'm looking for gluten-free, and that's kind of one of my things. <laughs> Everybody goes looking for the, the sites. I want to do that with people um, that are friends. I actually plan to do this more. Your destination is on the right. right here, I found it. Raw chocolate, pasticceria cudisca. Ooh, like truffles, gelato. Oh, I'm in heaven. Ooh, look at this. This is what I'm talking about. Oh my God, oh my God. This could be dessert before dinner. You have your desserts first, and then you have your, your dinner. <laughs> Ooh. Almond, cashews, wild berry, raspberry, agave, coconut, flour, oil, sugar, coconut sugar, lemon juice, and vanilla flavor. See, they have more over here too. Raising the standards of ingredients. I recommend, okay? Original in the world. You can forget. <laughs> no, no, okay, okay, okay. If you want this, for you, I, I take this for you. Don't worry. This is a chocolate, and that's not together. It's a salt. Very delicious. But this, it's another plant, okay? If you want to live in the world, don't worry. Okay, if you want. I love his passion. I love your passion. Yeah, yeah. Passione, sì. Okay. 
They have smoothies and ice creams too. Let's see what I get. I got my ice cream. Oh, delicious. I got cookies, chocolates. We met John Luca, who's just as passionate about it as I am. <laughs> Not only was he passionate and handsome, but really, really, this is delicious. I got the almond and coffee, and this is all raw. This is all vegan, all gluten free. We got pistachio and the raw chocolate. This is so molto gusto. It's very rich, very powerful. Like, you know good quality. That's what we were talking about earlier. Is once you've had something that's top notch, you know. Just like a good Italian coffee will teach you when you have a bad one. Just saying. That's if you have a refined palate. You don't oversensitize it with a bunch of junk, which a lot of people end up doing. Mm. So now, fountain of Trevi, Fontana di Trevi, and then the Spanish Steps area. Wow, that was a beautiful conversation I had with him. Just the whole being in awareness of what's really going on in the world, seeing with your eyes and not listening with your ears. You know, we both agreed there's a, an energy that is let's say, below the surface, wanting to emerge, wanting to explode. Oh, I love this. It's just a matter of time. Oh, here we go, doors. Oh, I love that. I love when nature says, hey, I want you to know I'm still here. I ain't going anywhere. That's what that makes me think of. When I see all the, the ivy, the vines, the different types of green on the building. How gorgeous is that? <laughs> this, the building is alive. <laughs> and there's where it originates right there. Check that out. <laughs> so cool. <sighs> yep. Changes in the air. That is for sure. You can be a part of it, or you can just be on the sidelines watching. I am heading in the direction. First, I'm going to go to Trevi, and then I'll go to Pantheon and the Spanish Steps, because those are my favorite places to visit. Believe it or not, and there's another church, but I'm not going to go in. Yeah, those are my favorite places to go. The Fontana di Trevi, Spanish Steps, and the Pantheon. The other place that I love is in Paris, is a building just based on the same style, the Pantheon. Might have to go back to the hotel at some point and change. But I did bring my sweater, and I'm pretty comfortable even in my shorts. <laughs> Look at the cactus. Oh my god, that's crazy cool. These things are huge. Huge. <laughs> the things you see when you're walking around, enjoying the sights. I just passed the station of Piazza Cavour. <clears throat> Love it. Kind of funny thinking about what my girlfriend said about me living my own eat, pray, love. And I was like, oh, honey, mine's got layers, layers upon layers. I wouldn't even be able to compare it. Although, I would say <clears throat> between Under the Tuscan Sun and Eat, Pray, Love, there's a lot of similar themes of life change. When I first moved to Italy, the first time, not when I was TUI, but when I got out of the Air Force and I took a job working in Naples, and that was in the year 2003. In 2003, that was when the movie around the same time, 
Under the Tuscan Sun had come out, and that was one of my favorite movies. And it reminded me of how much I loved Italy. I love this building. How gorgeous is that? So pretty with the sky as a backdrop. Now we're going to turn. Go this way. Everywhere you look, there's so much history. It's really cool. Beautiful textures and architecture and lights, sounds. So much to be bold. So, going back to under the Tuscan sun. Although I had never been married, so I had never really to deal with that kind of situation that she dealt with. It was the fact that she put so much into just starting over and just randomly buying a place, which is where I'm at in my life right now. Meso, that I was inspired to want to go back although in my case I had the cushion let's say of being supported by getting a government contract job working for Northrop Grumman at the time so I had all the details worked out to work on the military base I had all the you know what we would call support and that made my life easier, which is why most people do go into government contracting because they are supported. They can register the car on the, the base. It's called a support agreement, basically. And uh, have access to the military facilities so you can buy whatever you need on the base, as well as order fees. As I was saying about the support agreement, that having a support agreement basically gives you all the niceties of having a U.S. postal address. You can register your car, depending on if you had to ship your car, because some sometimes you can't always ship your car. Sometimes you're going to end up buying a new car. I ended up buying a car. I ordered it. I had a Mini Cooper, which has a story of its own. It was a lemon. I ordered a brand new to my specs. Or, you know, you can buy locally. Usually you'd have to buy it within what they'd call the Italian system, or the US system, I mean. So it would have to have already been registered in the US system versus if you had to transfer, let's say you bought an, an Italian car downtown, you would have to find a way put it in the system and that's probably more hassle than it's worth but once it's in the system a lot of people would sell their cars before they leave and when they sell them they usually sell them to people who are coming into the US system which could be anyone from NATO from uh, other nationalities to the US I don't know what that building is but it's pretty cool So yeah, I had a lot of support doing it. Now, right now, and I in my second time, I worked. I worked. My, <laughs> my video just stopped, and that's not the first time that that happened. So what I was saying, when I worked, first I worked for Northrop Grumman as a government contractor, and I had all the full support. Then I went away, um, I actually ended up working for different companies in that time frame because I went up to Slovakia to Bratislava to work for about eight to ten months and then I came back to Naples and I didn't even know it but when I went to work for General Dynamics which started out as Anteon and then they switched while I was working for them 
And they were familiar people that I used to work with. They did kind of a shady, shady deal. And I didn't know about it till later. But I still had an, an open, an open soggiorno, permesso di soggiorno in Italy from when I worked in North of Grumman. Here's where it got shady. They were supposed to submit for a brand new one, but they didn't. And I didn't know that and they didn't tell me. What they did do is basically they rode on top of it, which put me in jeopardy later I found out because that's how I found out is I took a job with another company and when they went to go submit for my paperwork, the Italians flagged it saying, hey, wait a minute, why does she already have this other situation? And it was, it was conflicting. And that's when I realized those, excuse me, those motherfuckers. And they, they- Turn right at Largo Angelicum. Hmm. Look at this. Oh, I'm trying to get that building behind me. How beautiful is that? Gorgeous. What I was saying? They literally tried to fuck me because in the very beginning they had the way my paperwork was written up i was supposed to get a bonus so when i called on it and i said hey i'm supposed to get this bonus the program manager proceeded to say well if you want you want to dispute it and and push it then we can do that but we may not he was he was bullying he was doing like a call my bluff kind of deal where they owed me a bonus he was saying, well, you can pursue it and it may turn out that they deny it and then you, you don't have a job anymore. But I was already in the job that they hired me to do for like four or five months. So it wasn't until five months later that I realized they owed me the bonus and I dropped it. And then they gave me problems down the road too because then I had somebody who, who was jealous of my situation who reported back to my boss and claimed that I don't know why she's why they like her so much and who talked negative about me and he was somebody I knew from the military so he was being negative because he was jealous of my situation and I figured that out because of the circumstances so when my boss gave me a rating he proceeded to make it sound like he based it on this person and I said wait a minute why are you telling me about this I said why are you why are you trusting this other person to give you information about me when I, number one, I don't work with him and he was only here temporarily. He, I wasn't here to support him. I don't support him. He doesn't, he doesn't, he's not one of my peers or my colleagues. Let's At say. the roundabout. So when it came down to it, I, I was like, you know what? I'm done being, uh, being unappreciated and treated like I'm supposed to be whatever they were trying to make me. So essentially I found another job, which is when I transferred over to that job, that was CSC. They, that's when I found out that when my, I almost didn't get my permesso di soggiorno renewed because of the fact that that previous company, Antion slash North of Grumman and uh, General Dynamics proceeded to, They proceeded to basically take advantage of my current work permit. Yeah. And they're the company that in the end left me hanging high and dry, abandoned me in a foreign country, and didn't even give me a ticket back to the States. So the reason I was telling that story was just to give you an idea that essentially, sometimes there's pluses and minuses in life. You have to reevaluate. While you're reevaluating, exit the roundabout onto Via Quattro Novembre. Peace. I know you're getting to hear my GPS too. You have to acknowledge where you can choose your peace, or you can choose a battle that's necessary or unnecessary, depending on your priorities, essentially. So, when all that was said and done, I went back to the state. Now, this is the direction I just came from and I was looking over my shoulder and of course there's always something to see looking all around you there's a big basilica remember we're going toward the direction of Fontana di Trevi I gotta cross the street up here all the ruins
Tatti di Traiano Museo di Fori Imperiali, Imperial Museum. Hmm. So, when all is said and done, I went back to the States in 2008. I went back and forth to Italy because I was still dating Claudio for a few, a couple years. Look at that. That's some old time. Like, that's old ruins. And look at that small tile. Like, these bricks are the really flat, skinny ones. You can see the moon through the clouds over there. So when you hear all that noise, a lot of times it's because they're escorting politicians, diplomats, blah, 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 blah. Kind of a crazy life, right? All this security for just a couple people who are supposed to represent us. I don't know. I don't know what to think of any of that. Especially after all my time in the military. So, going back to choosing your battles and choosing your peace. Ultimately, it's your choice in life. How you're going to live it. So it wants me to go that way, but we're going to go down the stairs. Because this is really cool with all the sights you can see in front of me. And the noise is behind me. So, this is Via Magnanopoli. I just like stairs. I don't like going downstairs. I like going upstairs because it's good for strengthening your legs and your courage is in your thighs. If you ever come to my classes, you can probably hear me say that enough times. Caesar pizza. Okay, so of course, you know, the reason I actually came in this direction is so that you can get all the views. Turn left onto Via Cuatro Novembre. Yeah, that too. <laughs> Piazza Repubblica. So, Republic Pla Plaza. Yep, and there you go. There's a lot of construction going on in here. You can tell it's been a while since I've been here. This is so cool. And I got my bag on the other hand, so you're, I'm lucky to be able to hold everything that I'm carrying and do the video too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what is that? I don't know what that says. That's the NH. Head east on Via Magnana Poli toward Via Cuatro Novembre. Don't you love when you get to hear that? NH Collection for Imperiale. I actually almost stayed here. I'm glad I didn't. I mean, it's a decent spot, though. I'm going to show you this area over here. I think you used to be able to walk, uh, drive over here, too. It seems like they're turning everything into walking areas, which, if you think about it, back in the day, original Roman times, it was mostly walking. And so over here, we have part of the old fort. Head east on Foro Traiano toward Via di Esufamia. She talks a lot, doesn't she? Yeah. On the other side of the street, way over there where the dome is, is where the main Colosseum, area, not the Colosseum, but the, the market, the Foro. And then to the left would be where the Colosseum is. But, you know, the more they uncover, the, there's layers upon layers of time periods. Even in Naples, that's one of the things that, um, when I used to run, one of my old running partners, he was amazing with history. He was an old chief mass sergeant in the Navy, and uh, he could tell some stories. He's, he would tell me about how when they keep on going down, there's more layers and more history and different time periods and how Naples had been run overrun by so many different uh, nationalities and the Greeks and the French and the, you know just there's just a history of well you know one one group comes in takes over writes up some rules and says oh we're gonna make you do what, such and such and then they're like okay well the next one what's what's different about you than anybody else you come and you're gonna leave eventually so we do whatever the hell we want so but going back to my story, in uh, 2010, I, I took a job working for the company at McDill in Tampa. And that was very short-lived because it turned out the woman that I was working with somehow felt threatened by me and my um, expertise. And my stepdad died. And right after my stepdad passed away, I had gone away. I had to actually ask for... Uh, bereavement 
leave. So I took a couple days of off. I even had to give my stepdad permission to head northeast on Forno Troiano toward Via di Euphemia. He was on his deathbed and I knew he was going to pass within the night when I had asked for the grievance time away from work. And uh, it was really sad because I wanted to see him one last time. I hadn't seen my mom in a lot while since then when it all happened. And his buildings are incredible. But essentially in 2010, um, it was just a sad time because my mom lost my stepdad and he was a huge uh, stone for her, a big rock of support and security. and. Uh, yeah, so I did go up there, and then when I came back, I literally lost my job. She, she, <laughs> I don't understand why. There wasn't really any rationale. There wasn't any logic in the way that I lost my job at that period of my life, um, other than I could, I recognized how she had an attitude toward me. She had just re retired out of the Navy, and she was going for a civilian job, even though she was a contractor and she was my quote-unquote boss. For some reason, she seemed to, the impression I got from her was that she thought that I wanted the job she wanted, and I personally could care less. I didn't want that job. And she was very, well, I guess I kind of pointed out some areas, things she didn't know, and then she pointed out some areas I didn't know. There was, there was a personality conflict there too, I'm sure. So then there's this beautiful building in front of me. Head northwest on Piazza della Madonna di Loreto for Via dei Forneri. So that building right there, if I'm not, this is the building straight ahead with the two blue stripes down the center. Oh wow, I never saw this. Wait a minute here. Hey, I don't remember this being uncovered. Oh, huh. not to this degree. Look at this. Huh. Underneath all that paint is rust. How cool is that? Old light post, right? So you can see where this was covered up. You can see the, the manholes with the buildings. Because like I said, the more you go under the earth, under the streets, there's more to uncover. Oh, we're getting this sunset afterglow. I, this is my favorite part of the day. So going back to that building over there with the two blue stripes, that's the blue, the building that Mussolini stood up on those steps. That's what's famous for. Okay, enough of that. Politics and shit like that doesn't really interest me, although I just see that there's a lot of dictators, a lot of dicks tating. Um, <laughs> you heard me. Dick's tating. Yep, that's what I said. And that's when my my video stopped and froze again because technology is doing its thing. We are still in the Mercury Mercury retrograde is shadow right now for the next couple weeks. It'll take a while for it to sort itself out. But I just want to zoom in just so you can see. I've never seen this so clean, really. see it in person. Open up a book, open up the internet. That's what technology is for. Save you some trouble. But I really love this building too. All the time periods again. Oh, okay. So where are we headed? To the Trevi Fountain, which is over this way. I should have turned down that other side street, but I could. I got caught up in my story, of course. <laughs> Head east on Piazza della Madonna di Loreto toward Via dei Forneri. That's the first time I looked down and noticed a feather under my feet. I really haven't been paying attention. And as I said, they just appear. So it's not like I'm looking for them. Yep. You're going to hear lots of that. It's just normal. È normale. Big doors. 
Piazza Venezia turns slightly right and becomes Via Cesare Battisti. <laughs> it's like, it's like dodge, dodgeball, except for it's dodge people. Just because the moon overhead looks so mesmerizing and beautiful. I love the afterglow. That's the kind of glow that we get down in Florida after the sun sets and the pretty pinks in the sky. I love it. Mm -hmm. Always something to say. Alright, now we're going to find our way because I know we got to go this way. I have a funny story to tell. So, years ago, I came here with my dad and his wife. It was the year that Berlusconi turned left. Getting getting elected for the first time and as prime minister and we stayed in a place right up up on the corner around here i forgot the name of it but i can tell you this it was so freaking noisy because as you can hear this is like one of the noisiest places you could end up staying so we are crossing the street okay i got a camera <laughs> i got i've got my as we would say, I've got my proof right in my hands. Just highlighting all the beautiful buildings and architecture. And all these statues. something separate from me and now I realize I think it's just that collective collaboration once again and that in all honesty your soul is always watching over you to keep you whole so that's one of my theories and I'd love to know yours that because our soul can only inhabit so much of our physical body Every time we heal, we create more space to allow another part of that piece, that soul of ours, to inhabit it. Because our soul is infinite. These bodies are limited. They're infinite. They're finite, right? So with an infinite soul, with an if a finite body, it has to adjust. That's why our bodies go through so many, like, what they call ascension sim symptoms. Ascension symptoms are essentially just when you heal something, you, re you reveal something else. You let go, you unveil yourself to allow and take in more of your, your soul. So by creating that space, by clearing that old, uh, let's say, wound, when you heal it, you open yourself up to receive more of your soulness, your wholeness, your your beingness, and that is called ascending. Um, most people are calling it spiritual healing. I consider it as you just uh, upgrading your your body to match more of your soul content, because there's more to you than what's limited in the body, and your body can only handle so much. So the more you clear, the more healing you're willing to go through, the more you're going to reveal your soul. Your soul's going to actually inhabit you more. And I think that's beautiful. 
So let me know what, how that resonates and if you want to talk more about that because it's just one of my many theories. Now we're in a really big touristy spot, by the way, because now we're coming up on the Fontana di Trevi. Oh yeah, we're coming up on it. Can you hear it? It's uh, in a much smaller plaza than what most people realize. If you've never been here, this is your first time seeing it. I put the wide lens on. Famous spots that have always been here. This is just crazy. I'm going to come here when it's really quiet. The best times are late at night or first thing in the morning. Especially when they're cleaning. This is water for the people. You have to come down to get water. This is one of my favorite places to come. You can find plenty of pictures online. story is if you throw a coin in, you're meant to return. thought it was kind of funny. This, this guy stepped in front and I just was patient and let him do whatever he needed to. And I asked if he could move his head. And he kind of got defensive like it's a public spot and I'm like, Okay, yeah, and you stepped in front of me and I was being patient. I just asked. Not a big deal. Just trying to do what I'm doing. And it would be appreciated. My and this is right behind it, so to give you perspective. by the fountain they often don't notice this behind it. All right, I'm telling you, it's a tight season here. There's more angels watching over. Just to look down the street. I love looking up these ceilings and roofs and buildings. But again, this is just massive and it's impressive. I wonder if it was at how long ago they decided to start putting buildings around it. It's like when I was in Venice, it's like, who decided to, to create such a concentration? But also noticing that this was a source of water for people too, because the fountain system, this is the part that people don't understand. The water system in, in Italy is amazing. Like there's a whole history behind the aquedotto, the cisterns, how the water system is underneath the streets, and it provides everybody fresh, clean water. Even with the modern technology, it's nothing like what it used to be. So, say adieu to this until the next time, because I'm going to take you to... Maybe we'll go to the Parantheon, maybe I should go straight to the Spanish Steps, actually. Because I still need to find food. And I want to find a really yummy place to eat. Because I'm choosy like that. Let's go this way. I know my GPS is going to tell me something else anyway, but that's okay because I came in the, the same way it wants me to go out. So we're going to go over here and just see from the side. There's so much detail in this that I'm saying that you gotta look at even the corners of the building. Alright, I'm gonna go this way.
It's beautiful restaurants, beautiful buildings. And there's the moon once again off in the distance. And here, I was looking at it going, why, what, what's this building? And then I looked at the map and I realized, oh, it has shopping. So Pinko, I think there's one of the things that stood out. But there's like a coffee place and it's really kind of cool when you see it. Pure Italian lifestyle. Munich Menace, Nuovo, Iconico, Nepore di Roma. So, Galleria Alberto Sordi. This is what this building is. And see, this is what I love. I didn't take you to any places that I would have taken you, like Galleria Alberto in Naples. I'll be going back, don't worry. And if you want to go with me, let me know. But here we have all the mosaics, all the small tiles. And then when you look at this place, it's incredible. Like this is being reconstructed. It's absolutely gorgeous. This is the kind of stuff that really just makes me go, wow. I always have my head up looking and appreciating just the little details. And then look up, up, up. Look at the gorgeous. Stained glass. One of my favorites since I was a little girl. When I was a little girl, we had a place in Massachusetts, in Dorchester, that had stained glass going up the stairs, and it always stood out in my memory. So this is an up-and-coming, being re renovated, so that it's going to be for shopping. And check this out. You can't beat this. Coffee, ice cream, pastries. Just a nice little place. I bet it's... Turn left onto Via del Corso. I bet it's bustling during the, the daytime. It's a little bit less right now. And once all these stores are open, it'll be even more. Look at that. Mm. All the details. And like I said, the floors, all the mosaics. Belchinelli, which is a bookstore. Wow. So it's like a big V, actually, in the shape of a V. Mirrored from one side to the other. How cool. I don't know if you can see this. I'm going to have to zoom in to really see the ceiling. Head south on Via del Corso toward Piazza Colonna. Like I said, it's like a V when you're looking at it from... How cool is that? From one angle to the other. Mm. So, and uh, as you come out here, and the thing is, is, I had never been inside of there, so I don't know if it was ever open, but I remember walking in this area. Huge perspective change, right? So across the street, if I'm not mistaken, this is the ministry area with this obelisk with a story all around it, because like, all around this has like stories. And I don't know the stories because I don't know the history, but it's fascinating, and there are plenty of people that know it. That moon, and then we get further out, this building is just incredible. And that's where I just came out of. And this is Benki, but this is one of the newer Benkis. Just peek in, look behind them. All that, I don't know if that's real, 
but it looks like a waterfall of chocolate. Look at that them. They are busy. They have a huge line going in there. Nuns too. I'll be passing by. I go to my other one over by the Spanish Steps is the one I know the best. So this is the direction of the park. Again, different. This is actually the exit. There's the there's another way to go in right there. They also have crypts. I did not know that. This is pretty. I just want to see what it looks like on the inside without having to order anything. So this is over my head. <laughs> Literally. I'm really picky. They put soy in their chocolates. I don't like soy. It should be cacao butter. Straight ahead. Here we go. Well, I went off the beaten path because I like it when I'm not behind a bunch of tourists. What do you see for me? Restaurante de Sabatino. That sounds yummy, actually. I think I've been there. Mm hmm. Oh yeah, I almost forgot the most thing about these travels. Hello. Is, uh, the music, compliments, the environment, the scenery. That's massive. Monday church service. Turn left to stay on Piazza Asignazio. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's what I'm looking at. Mm -hmm. Still moving, and the GPS is still talking to me. And behind me. Yeah. Gorgeous. Waza. I feel so miniature when I stand next to these places. Look at the size of the door. I mean, the door within the door is even bigger. Like, two of me on top of each other, at least. This is... I think I have to check and see if my light is on. I can't tell. But yeah. Oh yeah, this is... It's hard to see, but you get the gist. All right, moving on. Mm -hmm. So we are a few, a few more minutes, but literally straight ahead. Piazza del Rotonda and the Pantheon is in front of us. Finding your way down the streets. Oh wow, this is getting reconstructed up. I see scaffolding. Look at how old this is. And on the corner where the light is right there, where this wiring is around another light, is something missing. Same thing here. And then look at this when we get up here. Right in front, in the middle of this building, is a picture. So cool. Details. Taverna del Seminario. Tavern and Seminary. Restaurant. Pizza. kind of cool at night you know you get a different perspective in the day and a different perspective at night and between those lights is the moon halfway between the new and the full yeah 
this is pretty fascinating. Right there, you get the perfect contrast. It really does have an odor over here right now. It's a little stinky. Yeah. That is it. Will she cut perspective? If I zoom in, you'll get it a little clearer. There's no way to go in today. You have to go in there and take time to get the true perspective. So I'm standing next to the fountain now. Sometimes it's creepy, isn't it? If you really look at some of the, the art and the sculptures, it's like what kind of creatures? And if you've ever tripped, you should know that some of those will resemble some of the images you've seen. There's something to be said about, let's say, mushrooms or whatever psychedelics you may have tried that connects us to some of this old wisdom, technology, art, creativity, kundalini energy, prism. There's so many different names for it. Um, yeah, pretty fascinating. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna start moving on. We've been admiring this for a little bit. Around. A lot of times you don't necessarily want to eat in the same piazzas with a lot of these big, like Piazza Navona and all this, because these restaurants usually you're paying for the area. Not always the food is good, but I can't say that it isn't either. It's just, it's just a lot of the best places is, uh, a lot of the best places are actually outside of the piazza area. So we're going to find our way back to the Spanish Steps now, because that's where I know there's a lot of places that I like to eat, but I'm also looking on my GPS as well. Here we are once again, beautiful sights and sounds, just making my way all around, experiencing, exploring, appreciating, yep, listening and letting myself surrender to the flow. That's a lot. I love the look of this place. It looks inviting. Not sure where I'm going to end up. Where would you end up going? Hmm. Do you have any favorite places in Rome you'd like to share with me? I have another day. That's the only way to be. Surrender and trust in the universe. Gusti di Italiano, di blu gelato, my God. Everybody finding what, what they enjoy the most when they pay attention. I love it. <laughs> I'm just as much a tourist, but I'm just as much aware of paying attention to what's going on around me. The moon. 
so good the coffee mm. baba limoncello and baba rum and chocolate wow che cos'è yemen un tipo di caffè oh Interessante. Ah, ok. Diversi tipi di caffè. Ok, bene. Come sembrano? Sembra no. It's a different style of coffee. And he said it's less caffeinated and it's just the way that it's processed. So I'm not a big fan of all these little plastic cuppy things. I know that it's trendy, but the thing that concerns me is you're absorbing because when you heat plastic up it's either soy or lecithin in there so i'm not a big fan um when you use these things with plastic it, it leaches into the coffee so tell me how that's not affecting the flavor you know the um preservation of it etc etc that's just me my theories okay <laughs> I like glass, I like things to be maintained naturally, so these are the different coffees that they have, but maybe another time, because it's too late at night for me to have a coffee at this point, I'm going to go find food first, and I'd be up all night, and I need to be ready for my, I actually have not had coffee today, but I want to like retain some moisture because I'm dehydrated, and that tomorrow when I have my spa morning, which I'm extremely excited about, and then I can feel refreshed for the day. And then I'll have my coffee and my cappuccino afterward. And in fact, I have a place that I want to go to when I am in that element. I may even go sit up on the terrace and get some sun after the fact, if, I, if there's space. Because after today, I don't know. I'm hoping I can capture some time on the terrace and maybe even in the pool before I take my walks around tomorrow in the afternoon because essentially my massage appointment will take me till at least one o'clock in the afternoon. And that's perfect for pranzo, for lunch or brunch, depending on where I decide to go. There's a beautiful place and I have to check. Um, it's over by the Spanish Steps and it's a breakfast place. It's kind of like a, kind of reminds me of like a British setup and they had pancakes and, you know, American style breakfast. And all that years ago it was one of the first places that back then my american boyfriend had brought me to that i loved so i'll show it to you when we get over there joliti have to look at where the resources come from and then the disposal as well and how much waste look at our computers our phones our you know the batteries they implode like you can't put them out in fact that's one of the jokes that the fire department has it's like oh it's a tesla it's on fire let it burn because there's nothing they can do to put it out to it, it will incinerate itself basically it takes the oxygen and the oxygen consumes it like it burns up so we're going that way
used to say buy pieces of quality and always think to get your clothes tailored to fit you turn right toward via del corso i want to say we might be in the campo de fiore area but i'm not 100 percent sure that's my other favorite little section quarter quartiated is what they call it oh. mm -hmm. I mean, it's supposed to have turned back there but I wanted to walk to this building it's so pretty Right onto Via della Fontanella di Borghese. Continue onto Largo Carlo Goldoni. Okay, yes, I am influenced by the fact that I like good quality and certain designs. Continue on to Via Dei Condotti. But at the same time, I'm not a slave to it. If I find something I like, I buy it if I can afford it. And I appreciate good quality. Union, military union, that's what this is. H&M, Luju, all right. These are chestnuts roasted. Mm -hmm. I guarantee they're gonna taste good. I've had experiences where they did not. This is via condotti, which is essentially a fancy shop. So if you want to, you want designer, this is the street to be on. The whole section, the whole area around the Spanish steps is designer. Dolce Gabbana, Michael Kors, Amanda. I don't know who can actually wear that, really. <laughs> um, kind of looks like a torture chamber stuff. I, I get it, I get it. I just, I'm teasing. Everybody's got their style. And then again, I'm back to my Todd's. I like Todd's. I like those are cool purses. I don't think they're in my style today for what I want. But I know exactly what I'm looking for if I find it. I have to see what they have for bags because I'm due for a new one. Those are pretty. I like the white one. The white one, of course, your traditional camel. Tea cup. Tots. Alrighty. Spanish steps. Straight ahead. El Bolta. 
It fascinates me how many people have to have these conversations on their phones to the point where it's like, we don't all want to hear it, by the way. There's like no privacy in the world today. And then they wonder why people are constantly listening and, you know, oh, you gave your information away and then you started putting it up to the cloud. I love that style. The suit and the bag. And they have the best cashmere coats. At least I have my old one. I want a lighter one though. See, back in the back, I really like that like, oatmeal coloring. I even like the bluish gray. I'm gonna go in there tomorrow. Let's see. I don't even need that kind of coat. I live in Florida, at least for now. But for now, let's just say that it's time to flush out a good portion of my my wardrobe and start over. It's time to get, get a new, fresh start. Like those, like that one in the middle is calling my name. It looks like it would work for between seasons which is perfect especially right now and I like the black on the left too those are gorgeous totally my style and in some ways I'm reinventing my style a little bit I love, I love that white suit this pants with white bottoms just giving you a taste of my style not that for sure not my thing Your mommy. Saint Laurent. Actually, they moved their store. I know it used to be before. At the other corner. Louis Vuitton. Oh. Well, and my phone's about to die too, so I gotta go plug it in. This is bull daddy. Damiani. Not getting run over by one of those things. And this is the famous Cafe Greco. Again, it's a lot of jewelry. And they do purses too. Then you've got Prada, all made in China, just saying. Gucci. straight ahead you got the Spanish steps so I have made the rounds in the night 
And then, of course, my other favorite is Dior. I would love. I will do it tomorrow. Their door is completely closed. But I will be coming back here tomorrow. So, voila! Ci siamo. There's another fountain statue. No, that's a statue. I'm actually going to take you over here while I look in the... I will be coming back tomorrow to this area because this is, again, like I said, this is my favorite little area. And I love coming over here. So, here we have the fountain that's a, like a shift that's an upside down fish. At least that's the way I interpret it. Of course, you'll see it at night. And then you have the stairs. How interesting, huh? Oh, yeah, to me it always looked like a ship, but when you look on the sides, they look like an upside down fish. Interesting, huh? What do you mean? Like, to me, that looks like eyes of a fish. Upside down. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to show you my favorite place for breakfast that I may come over tomorrow or maybe I'll come over Wednesday and right away. Depends on when my girlfriend's going to pick me up. This is the tea room. It's Barrington's Tea Rooms. And it's so beautiful inside. And they make pancakes and all you need is tea. So most likely I can find it's really, really pretty inside. It's like a British tea place. Let's see if they'll let me just kind of sneak my phone in here. Super ice creams. And then we can see it all. So unfortunately, the place that I was hoping to eat at the tea house basically doesn't have they can't guarantee gluten free which is unfortunate because of the cross contamination in the kitchen over there is the metro and that between the buildings i think i know where i'm going to go eat but i'm going to do a little walk around before i head that way over here again we have more fancy shopping we have chanel we have this side street and see there's tons of restaurants just walking down all of these streets. You can get caught. I'm gonna go this way because there's another gelateria. I think it's the I'm not sure if it's right here. I'll find out in a second. So that we'll find out together. How about that? Pucci and New York. Pucci is one of my other favorites. Fun funky fabrics. <laughs> And down straight ahead is also a lot of really beautiful restaurants and places. And look at this. I'll tell you what, they don't want to buy them. They don't have any money, it seems. But they're definitely flashy. No, I don't have any soldaten. Crazy. They have a place in Capri. Capri, as many would call it. I'd be curious to see when they finally do a documentary on them or a film based on them. So there's some beautiful places down here. Hogan, shoes, also purses. Mostly, originally it was mostly men's shoes, but it's quite nice. Claudio used to wear the Hogan shoes. Music. 
left onto Via Borgo and Yona. And because I can. How about that? Choices, people. Everyone has choices, and I'm making mine. Mm-hmm. Is that what she's telling me to turn left? I think she means the next one. I believe this used to be a church. Oh, 
pressure sometimes to eat by myself. This is a pressure food. You've arrived. Oh, how beautiful. Oh my gosh, the snow in here. Uh, is oh, oh, this is so sweet. Black tie and nothing. Yes, I'll see. I just want to point out I'm in a bathroom and look at the way they did the walls. Like, this is all resin and it's got pebbles and leaves in between. How cool is that? Yeah. This is a beautiful place and I'm so grateful. I found it. There's only one bathroom. It's tiny. So I'm sitting outside, if I'm not mistaken. He gave me a table, but I'm not sure which one. So. Ecco, grazie mille. Attenzione. Ok. Thank you. Grazie. I'm going to tell you right now, I am so grateful I am at this restaurant. The menu has me drooling. This is a truffle restaurant. I love mushrooms, I love truffles, and everything on the menu is sounding delicious. I don't know what to choose, I just gotta find out what I can get gluten free, which my understanding is there's supposed to be a good selection. If I want a pizza, they can make it gluten free. I'm sure they've got pasta that's gluten free. So let's see what we can get. I, I'm totally hungry enough to eat a first and a second. And maybe on to pasta, I'm not sure. Yummies! come inside. I asked to be moved because the people that sat behind me lit up and I cannot eat my food and enjoy it when someone is smoking around me. And since my sinuses have been clogged, I don't need them to be, get worse. I want to smell the food. And being inside is even better because all I can smell is the truffle oil and the truffles is so intoxicating delicious santo l'odore di truffi tartuffi a fruit sacred to the Aphrodite. This is Pacho of Pepe. How beautiful is that? This is my first course. Mm -hmm. You have to watch me eat the first bite. This smells amazing. With pecorino cheese. This is me making an exception. The deliciousness. Mmm. 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 -hmm. Molto buono. Mmm. -hmm. Okay, here it is. Delicious steak. Yum. I have to tell you right now, I already took one bite without doing it. Well, I was on the film. Wow. This flavor of this meat 
is saturated in truffles and it's amazing. My goodness. I can't remember the last time I ever tasted a meat that was so rich in flavor. Truffles. Mm. I kid you not, this is the most flavorful, delicious steak I've ever had. OMG. Seriously, it doesn't get better than this. Mm. Melt in your mouth, rich in flavor. I'm just so grateful for it all. There was ritual around animals and them giving their lives for us. I don't make this a habit. I don't take this lightly. I appreciate every bite. There's so much gratitude in my heart that this nourishes my body fully. Mm. This is really, really beautiful. Mm. Life is meant to be savored in all five senses of life is meant to be fully, richly engulfed, experienced, embraced. Let it embrace you. Whatever you do, try not to judge your experience. Just be in it. Not a, a part away from it, but in it. Be fully present in the now. Feel into all of those five senses. That's what will heighten your intuition. And your experiences will be much richer for it. All right, what you're seeing is a egg with truffles. These are white truffles. So this is special because this is that time of the year when the truffles are being harvested. And also, the white truffle is much more expensive than the black. So we are going to indulge in love every little morsel of this. The, the, the smells are just amazing, I can't even tell you. Because it is so delicious, OMG, like, this is a treat. This is my dessert. The smell of the flavors. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. Pungent, flavorful. Wow. Gives a kick. It's got a little pecan. A spice. And that's so nice. <laughs> With Frank Sinatra playing in the background, I am about to devour this tiramisu. Gluten freestyle, yummy. Get that spoon in. Hey, wait, you can see my face's reflection. Hey, hey. As we say, get in my belly. Mmm. <laughs> <coughs> then in Rome, tiramisu. It's what's for dessert. Mmm. Mmm. Wow. wrap and I am happily satiated ah, and satiated in a way that I am so grateful and delighted it wasn't too much it was just right mm. Mm -hmm -hmm. time to go back to the hotel and relax take a shower and get ready for bed oh yes beautiful I'm making my way back to the hotel. I'm looking up again. 
<laughs> and appreciating what I'm seeing. And of course, can't help but say, doors. I love doors. It's they're just so fascinating. And they're portals. Doors are gateways, entries and exits, merging realities from one side to the other. You know? Step on to the other side. And I just couldn't help it's so wild how this is. The dying off and the renewal mixed and matched and the flowers. I don't know if you can see the flowers that are on the sides. They're like a pretty pink. Absolutely awesome. Again, we're shopping. I like window <laughs> shopping. It's it's cheaper. Just saying. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is the direction of the Spanish Steps, and at the end of the street you would take a left. And my hotel is about five minutes away, I think. I'll have to check that. I'll be back to you in a second. I think that's Russian. <laughs> so here we are, Spanish Steps are over there. A little dark tonight. Robert Valentino is quite pink. <laughs> quite illuminated. And so here we are passing by this huge statue. <laughs> These guys are always trying to get rid of roses and flowers and such. I was going to stay at the Hassler, but then I said, you know what, maybe next trip. It's just crazy how these statues are enormous. It made people want to take big statues of people so huge. And then on the very top, we have to zoom on back. It's a woman with the wreath around her arm. around her arm and around her head she has stars and angels at her feet. Like the more you zoom in the harder it is to keep it in focus. And in the picture. Hmm, into the scene. And there she is. Top of all of that. Off to my hotel now. Okay, I was trying to figure out what was going on with the bottom of my foot. And I just looked at it. And I'm like, what the heck is that? It looks like ice cream. And it's 
sticky and slippery. I'm gonna have to wipe up my shoes. I think it was over here I stepped in it while I was walking around the statue. Yeah, that's totally, yeah, ice cream. I mean, given all the ice cream around this area anyway. But yeah, this is the Maria Virgin, Virgine Genetrici Day. Okay, all that stuff. Look a building over there. Anyway, onward. We're going this way. To the hotel. Back. To the creature comforts. I think this is the Basilica dei Fratelli. I just thought that was kind of cool to look up and see it. And once again, lots of images on the top. to see the buildings the way that they're really uh, illuminated but it's Il Popolo Roma, Romano Il Popolo, Popolo Romano I gotta turn left up here and there's a mini tunnel
wrought iron, the balconies, the window frames, every little detail. Something fun about every little detail. Oh, you scared the crap out of me on those stupid little things. I'm not crazy about those things. I thought it was cute when the couple went by me on them. I didn't think it was so cute when that guy just came up on my left side. Spooky. I was videoing as I was crossing the street and literally the bus driver stopped he says what what are you doing recounting and and asking me you're making a video what are you doing and I said I'm making a blog a vlog and he's like oh <laughs> and then just now another guy stopped me asking me if I knew where some locale named and when I say locale it's it means local spot called MoMA and I said I have no idea you're gonna have to go find it you got a GPS he goes but it's not called that <laughs> I'm like okay can't help you sorry oh you're American where are you from and then they start asking you questions you got to be really careful about when you an answer the questions because you start answering questions you could be they could be kind of fishing too so there's the that part and then there's the part of what kind of invitation are you making if you start answering questions like what energy are you emitting and what are you inviting? Because they'll, sometimes there'll be people trying to get your attention in a way that maybe you just don't want it. And don't just be kind because, oh, I don't want to hurt their feelings. Pay attention to whether or not you want them uh, latching onto you, let's say. Kind of like the taxi driver for me earlier today where he's like, 
are you, are you engaged? Are you married? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's the case. Huh. This is kind of cool. What is this? Interesting. There's an echo. <laughs> anyway, so in the case of the taxi driver, I just said, yes, I'm engaged. I'm, I've got a partner. I've got a, a husband. I'm meeting him later. Because you just don't want to invite more problems. Or you're just not interested. And it isn't about, like, <laughs> you know, somebody's feelings. It's about... No, sorry, I'm not just going to, I'm not going to. You've arrived. This. And I just got to my hotel. So here we are. This is the hotel I'm staying at. Isn't this gorgeous? I'm quite happy with my choosing on this trip because every trip I think should be different. And here we are. I'm going inside. Honey, I'm home. Like a push or pull. Look at my buddies, my lions. Mm -hmm. it smells nice in here too. Hey, cool. Wanna say it out? Actually, I do have a question. What was the question I had? I don't remember. Time to go night nights. Fuori di servizio, do not use. What? Oh, the one on the left. That scared me for a second. I'm like, no, no, no. Not that I would have a problem if I have to take the stairs. This is staff. But there are stairs over there if you needed them. Numero tre. Close the doors. Yeah. So yeah, the rooftop terrace. It's not that big. And the hotel and the pool is also not that big. I swear I think I saw like maybe seven or eight beds next to the pool. So I have an appointment in the morning to be in the spa that I am so excited about. I am on the third floor and here I am. Okay. It also smells really nice up here. They have this stuff. You gotta be careful. If you ever get these kinds of things, you don't need that many of these sticks. If you put too many in, it really stinks. And it's overkill. And it will make you nauseous. Especially if you're like me. Alright. And here we are. Home sweet home. And I'm back. I wonder if they turned down my bed. Usually. Oh, yes, they did. See? See what they do? They turn down your bed. They move your slippers to underneath with a little towel. That's so sweet. I'm happy. They turned it down for me. Okay. Time for night nights. All right. I'm going to do a little reflection on my trip now. A little bit early to overall. But I've just realized, um, not just realized, but in comparing... All the different times in my trips. I started out going up to Venice, which was to revisit some old, when I used to go and do the Venice Film Festivals and some of my old friends there. And then on to Portugal, because that's part of something I'm considering doing. And then to Spain and Tenerife, and then back to Naples and here to Rome. The places that seem to stand out the most as really feeling <sighs> embracing, soft, in the flow for me have essentially been the places that really were kind of like, this is what I want to experience versus revisiting some areas. Like it was nice to go to Venice, but it had a little bit of, hmm, hmm. Yeah, I'm, that's that's in the past. And like I said, this is about reclaiming my fierce woman and recognizing where the past no longer serves and where it did. And I'm taking the pieces that did and carrying them forward and integrating with the pieces of me that I've become over this time. 
And then when I went to Portugal, there was a little bit of a, there was a little bit of a, mm, I was kind of relying on some other people as I kind of did in Venice. And then I went to Spain to stay with my friend. And that was really nice because I felt like I was taken care of and that felt really good. And then Tenerife, which was another choosing of my, I want to do this for me. And that was huge. Absolutely. Highly recommend going on a warrior woman retreat with Budokan, with Malene Shane. That was on the top. And then going back to Spain, I enjoyed spending my time with my friend again. And then going to Naples. I was just hesitant because I hadn't been there for so long. And... I'm grateful that Marisol hosted me and I spent time with her. It was really special. Um, I do wish I had stayed downtown for a day or two just to kind of walk around and be on my own to kind of <sighs> re-experience some things. I probably should have done that the other day and that's okay, I didn't. I needed some rest because of this head congestion. But then I'm grateful that I decided to come to Rome early and spend these two days just on my own in the hotel, treating myself to dinner this evening, which was phenomenal, and then going to have a spa day tomorrow morning. And yeah, I'm really grateful I decided to do this, this part of the, the trip. And then I'll have my last day with my girlfriend and her two daughters to re-catch up. And yeah, I'm, I'm really grateful for that. But essentially, the areas where I had hesitation and I was kind of depending on other people, those are the areas that stand out as going, hmm, I recognize where that doesn't serve me when I depend on other people and it's not like a fuck yes. It was a kind of okay, but when I made the choices to do certain things and I knew that's what I wanted, I'm gonna tell you right now, Trust your instinct. Go with what you were like. Fuck yeah. If you're kind of like him, him and on, don't do it. You may have a little buyer's remorse. You may have a little regret. You may even turn around and go, you wish you should have, could have. Don't should or could on yourself. But it served me in all senses because I see the silver lining in all my experiences. I see the blessings. And I'm grateful for each and every one of them because it's just reminding me to trust myself, that my choices all come back to feeling, not overthinking. Because the Himen and the Han is the overthinking. And in Kundalini Yoga, we talk about you have three minds. You have the positive mind, the negative mind, and the neutral mind. And you should only spend no more, no less, but three seconds in each. So it should take you nine seconds total to come to a conclusion to make a choice. If it takes you more than nine seconds, you're too much in your head. And you're too much in either the positive or the negative mind. Not the neutral, because you can't get to the neutral until you've processed properly through the negative and the positive mind. And first off, if you spend more time in either one of those two sides, then you're not balanced. Something in you is off. And when you acknowledge that, hmm, that's huge. So, again, processing. Coming to a conclusion, a decision should take you no more, no less than nine seconds. Otherwise, you're too much up in your head. That's all a part of mindfulness. Mind over matter. But, at the same time, knowing that the mind is what created the matter to begin with. And that if you can't drop into your heart, it may get you in trouble. <laughs> anyway, I'm so grateful. Thank you for following my story. And let me know what stands out the most and what you really enjoyed. And if there's anything, any questions that you have, ask me. I am here for all of this. I am here to remind you, you are here for experience. That the hurricane reminded me that if I were to lose everything, I would never lose my experiences. Stuff can be replaced. And that is why we're supposed to be in the world, but not of it and not attached to the things. The things are just formalities. They kind of keep us anchored, but sometimes they keep us stuck. So I am going to take a shower. I am going to 
get myself ready for bed, wash my face clean, and have a sweet dreams. And I hope you do too. So lots of love, hugs and kisses. Buona notte, sogni d'oro, ti voglio bene. Mwah.